Dynamite did an absolutely atrocious number. Thorough, massive trouncing of NXT over Dynamite. Yeah. But uh, there were some extenuating circumstances, but I will just say some. They could have done a significantly better job alerting you to the new time and date, and clearly they did not. Tell them that they're paid by a con. CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre, Hell in a Cell. I love this match. This yeah. match was awesome. It was great. There was a lot of violence, the, 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 especially when Punk glommed him with a toolbox. 16 staples for Drew. Broke his uh, head in half. Yeah. Can we stop hitting each other in the head with metal things, please? After it, well, the answer looked, is apparently no. Apparently not. It looked like somebody turned a faucet on yeah. Drew's head. It was bleh. I'm a fair guy. In the last six months, I thought that it was the best Nia Jax has ever been, and then we had this match. This was the old Nia. It was a disaster. Sweet Bailey, who is such a such a, a, a vibrant, innocent personality. Her initial gimmick was that she was literally a little girl. Mm -hmm. She gets up and says, "Fuck!" <laughs> this has to be the worst pay per view match on a WWE show since Seth and the Fiend. Right? We have to go back to like 2019. Holy shit! That has to be the most expensive belt ever made in history. I thought they had the men's and the women's belt stacked upon top of each other. <laughs> oh, no. Team. No, that's one belt. This, this oh belt goes... Oh, my gosh. This thing is gaudy and huge and ridiculous. You got to do the piss test. Sure. You had to be exposed nipples to knees to show you were not hiding anything. Understood. This belt would cover that part of your body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Goldberg's there with his version of Hook. Gage. <laughs> Actually, also named after a tool, yeah, yes. Yeah. You know, what I told Brett wasn't true. How could the greatest wrestler on earth be impressed with a one-trick pony? You ever notice how awesome Gunther is, by the way? Oh, he's awesome. He's incredible. Cody and Roman are really, really good. Jacob Fatu is awesome. Yep. Solo Sokoa should still be in NXT. There's a chant of Solo sucks in Atlanta, also in my apartment. You can wrestle, Chance. He can wrestle to like a baseline competence level. It would be more entertaining if he was worse. Then we could at least laugh at him. But he has nothing interesting in any way for minutes on end. It is Jimmy Uso. Back for the first time since April. And then the Rock's music hits. Oh my god, this crowd. A yeah. thermonuclear reaction. <laughs> this crowd If they went... bottled this audio energy, they can power the city of Atlanta for the rest of the decade. They it's... went nuts! Yeah. And he just came out and stood there. After the show, Kevin Owens attacked Cody Rhodes in the parking lot. It was shot by fans. Oh really? They, Even they better. did it. They they did it in that area where fans like you know they show up and oh this is where the wrestlers show up and leave. Right. So they always have a crowd of people there. Yeah, yeah. So all the footage you see are like fans on their cameras taking pictures of it. That's great. So That's it was better. it was actually it was quite brilliant the way that they did it. They interviewed the Beast Mortos and he goes ah, and then Roddy and his crew show up, and they say Beast, you're supposed to be with us. And he goes ah, and then. Mike Bennett says, you can't trust those guys. And then he goes, Arr! His first name is Frank. Frank Mortos, attorney at RAR. 1-800-RAR. Granny laid on the guilt trip to end all guilt trips because we're going 30 minutes late. What are you doing, Granny, that we've just ruined, ruined the night by going late? What was it? Nothing? Oh, no, she doesn't want to talk about it on the air. Sorry, I wrote... Forgot we going 30 minutes late, and then you began. Gee, thanks. 30 minutes late. Was not told. Aggravating. I guess my time doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Golly. You happy, Granny? You made me so angry. You're over there snickering, laughing at what you've done. God. Good. <laughs> You're going to have a heart attack, Anything else? Granny. Yeah. Goody, goody. goody. Goody, goody, she says. Now the news of you having a what? What medication arrest. did they give you to make the heart blacker? Vinny and Sean have birthdays this week. It goes without saying they are total geeks. So Granny bake them a birthday cake, and don't give Brian any. For God's sakes, no, it's not a limerick at all. Never mind, I fucked that up. That's he fucked it up, and I fucked up his fuck up. A A language B. You enjoying yourself? Quietly giggling over there. All right, Granny. What have you got today? Nothing. <laughs> all right, we'll see you later. You better have something after all that. Liv Morgan versus Ray Ripley. Just recently. 
<laughs> That's <Yes>. the date. <laughs> Tell us about Ray Ripley. Can I ask what the heck that ending was? It was stupid is what it was. You told me that you watched CM Punk and Drew and didn't watch any more of the show, but this was on the show. I know. I watched this one uh, <laughs> because I wanted to see what happened with Dominic. Punk and McIntyre was bad. Why is that? They beat the heck out of him, and they brought back the blood on all of everything. Yeah? Which yeah. they haven't done much of lately. You don't like that? In which Midwestern city did rapper I'm in them grow up? Detroit. <laughs> M and M. M and M. Eight Mile. Okay, new, new, we had a new segment. Granny reads rapper names. That's, that's... <laughs> I'm an M. <laughs> I am an e M. M and M. M and M. Yep. M and M. M and M. All county rocker Ryan Adams covered an entire Taylor Swift album. What is the name of that album? Ryan. 1989. Adams. That's the right answer, dum dum. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> wow. Okay, now I'll quit picking on Brian and go away. <laughs> Thanks, Granny. <laughs> you know the best part of this show was er Ernie Ladd. Fucking Ernie Ladd. Ernie Ladd was awfully great. Ernie. You're the special guest commentator today, so why don't you uh, give us some commentary? And that was all Ernie needed. He fucking took over the show. And this guy was a fucking great, like, flat-out great commentator. He'd be maybe the best commentator in wrestling today. Should I mention the ratings? Dynamite did an absolutely atrocious number. Thorough, massive trouncing. Of NXT over Dynamite. Yeah. But uh, there were some extenuating circumstances, but I will just say some. They could have done a significantly better job alerting you to the new time and date, and clearly they did not. So then we get a Danielson backstage video. What the fuck was with this audio? Horrible. This was some of the worst audio. This was like a 2005 Brian and Vinny show. His reaction to everything was to pump both fists to his sides and go, Me! <laughs> And <laughs> close Enough out of you, God damn it! Then it's time for more talking. This was one of the weirdest dynamite segments I've ever seen. He was wearing a pink fur coat, yes, and he reached into his pocket and pulled out a giant fucking rock, and he accosted this man. Three months, whatever it's been now, of Darby Allen being the stupidest, most unlikable character in wrestling continues. I don't get it. He's a stupid dick. That's what the Darby Allen character is. Wow. Don will get the services of Lance Archer. Roosh gets to be the head of LFI. But the new manager of Los Ingo Ingobernables. Los well, LFI. La Faxiana Gobernables. I'm Spanish, you know. Jake the fucking Snake Roberts. Yes. All right. These two tightrope walkers, literally. Yeah. Trapeze artists breaking the laws of physics, rocking all of Spokane, or at least the people who were there, tearing this house down. It felt all of a sudden like there's 30,000 people there. And I love Jeff Jarrett. Inner grumpy old man came out. Missed opportunity for covers here. Wanted to look everyone in the eye. He is one of the best wrestlers in the world. So it's only right to stay where the best wrestle in AEW. And everyone cheers. I thought it was fine. Would have been better with Daddy Magic there. Sure. It would have been better if they didn't tease that he might say he's going to NXT because nobody bought that. Yeah. They're just waiting for him to announce he re-signed. And... So this was a match that was supposed to be the Britt Baker match against Willow. Britt was sick, yeah. and I guess we found out today she did a video. She had strep throat. Yeah. Could barely even hear her. And uh, apparently fever, just miserable, couldn't get on the plane. Statlander has randomly turned babyface. Yes. Stokely Hathaway has vanished. Yeah. He's now looking for somebody else. We don't know why she turned. We don't know why they're not together. We have no explanation for any of this. We had Will Ospreay and Ricochet going to a draw in a great match. And what people want is them to do it again. But they inserted Takeshita. And, I mean, the match is going to be awesome. But it feels like it's early for Takeshita to be involved in this thing. This Brian Danielson is fucked. Like, I don't think people know exactly how much of a wreck he actually is. It's actually worse than I thought it was. I'm pretty sure it's all over on Saturday. This was his last television match ever. And because of the way they're doing this storyline, 
they couldn't really tell you that. Like, they couldn't sell tickets saying this is the last time you'll ever be able to see Brian Danielson in a ring. Like, knowing all of this, I watched this match and it was just, like, sad. <laughs> that this was, like, the end of Brian Danielson's television career after all these years. We watched it right here and, like, nobody watched it on TV and nobody watched it in the building. Just kind of sad. Trick Williams comes out in these pants. These pants were incredible. And then I realized that a matching full-length shirt open, of course, because Trick has ripped abs. This outfit was twice as gaudy as that crown jewel belt. Incredible, incredible drip, as the kids say. Who should make a surprise appearance but Jay Uso? And that was it. That was Jay Uso's appearance in the show. He did an entrance. Yeah, that's what happened. Trick had a great promo. Hey, he was advertised. They said he would appear. Okay. He appeared. <laughs> He did. We got our uh, money's worth. And uh, Julia finally interrupts. And they're like, that's fine. There's one of you and two of us. Come on down. But then Stephanie Vacour comes out. And they pronounce her name like eight different ways in this show. I, heard, I think Vacker is my favorite. So they clean house. They send the heels packing. They do pick up the belt together. Because, of course, only one can be queen. Tony D'Angelo and Obafemi? Yeah. This is the best match in NXTs, at least since Ilya Dragunov left. Thank you. This was awesome. This was fucking incredible. Absolutely. Yeah, incredible. Javon Evans versus Randy Orton. Yeah. I didn't like how nonchalant Randy was about them fucking up that big move. Yeah. They missed it. As you noted, his 43-year-old don't give a fuck Randy Orton anymore. Y young Randy Orton, this may have been an issue. Javon goes for that tornillo, and Randy jumps for the RKO, and fucking everybody went nuts because they've never seen him miss it. And so in their brains, he hit it. Mm. And it yeah, wasn't yeah, until... Yeah, yeah. There's like a, they, ever go, they go fucking nuts, and then there's a pause, and they realize, oh, he... Actually didn't get it. And it's just amazing to listen to the reaction. And then Randy just grabs him, smiles. He says something to him like, take it. Boom, it's another one. He covers him with a smile and pins him. Yeah. I laughed. 